that I had to make a choice, which was to not dare to reflect to somebody, either to go into exile or to remain a, combat, a combatant in the domestic struggle. I chose to do things the way I know best, to become a lawyer of remarkable excellence, of unfailing integrity, and of commitment to the broader struggle of our people in all their kinds and shapes, in all their colors and origins for an equal and just society. To that end, I wanted to become an attorney. Even if I was, convict, I was a convicted terrorist, they said, and I did everything to achieve that. I litigated against the law society to let me in. They didn't want to. I went on to the Bar Council, which had a race clause that excluded people who looked like me. There too, I kicked the door open, very determined to become a spokesperson of our people in difficult times in that troubled past. I defended every activist you care to remember. I searched and found MK Carders in solitary confinement, protected them and defended them. I saved a number of upper combatants from further hangings and executions in Victoria. I've appeared in trials of Azamla fighters Few that might have been the were captured and tried. I had the privilege of defending Dr. Fabian Rebeiro, Titus Buffon, Smamali Sonkash, Winnie Mandela, Jan Shaw, Clement Zulu, Ahmad Kassi, Nkosinati Nkleko, Ingwa Pele Madimwana, Zelaki Sisuli, Tami Mazwai, Matata Tseli, Roni Mamweba, Don Nkadime, and numerous trade union formations. I have the blessing of a vast, varied, and pro I had the blessing of a vast, varied, and progressive law practice that was well aligned with my personal and collective mantra that I was my own liberator and that our people are collectively their own liberators. Before I knew it, I was senior counsel with only 10 years of practice at the bar. Of course, after five years of practice as an attorney. Now, before the democratic transition gained traction, I made a conscious choice not to be a politician. But to remain a freedom fighter and a revolutionary. No one put out what is the difference. There is a difference. And I said it out in my autobiography. But I chose not to be a backbencher, in other words, and to have the free space to be able to move and influence society, to pursue those ideals that are to settle on expediency. That I thought I could do best by, by resigning from all political formations and by concentrating on being a full-time legal practitioner. To the memory of many like Brady, who thought I belonged only in the political terrain. Aside a little digression into business, I concentrated on becoming as good a lawyer and later as good a judge as I could be. There's other justices who pestered me to come to the bench. There's Maruma Mwerani who made unsolicited calls. But even more emphatic was President of the time, who's here present, Mr. Tabo Becky, who in his characteristic way <coughs> cleared his throat. <laughs> I would imagine took the pipe out of his lips. <laughs> and when Chief, you know, <coughs> and Paul, you're one of the leaders of our people. You know business to be business. <laughs> Nelson Mandela pursued very much the same way, but he was a little more blunt. <laughs> and I suspect he was sent on me by the Chief Justice of the time of the Chasco Senate and the President of the, of the Republic, Tabo Beki. And as I said a little again, he said, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> Your people need you. 
out of dentists, and I became a judge. I didn't quite know that he would come back one day when he was older and said, ah, uh, how? Will you look after me when I'm no longer on this world? I said, I won't follow Tata. And he went away, he made a wheel, and said, George Bezos and I should look after him when he's no longer alive. A singular honor. As my mother often says, <coughs> blessings of the Lord knows no limit. <laughs> often say. And the first of the blessings was a near perfect health. You kind of energy in industry if you're not aware. I've never been in a hospital to now, except for circumcision. <laughs> this allowed me the energy to no end, and I think and everybody around me that this was possible. And in the 15 years of service, as the man on my left, the chief just I've never taken sick leave. And the only time when I was away from work for a week, as I said yesterday, was when my beloved son, it's still a little bit, it was a count. So that life, in time dedication to hard work, I brought to my judicial obligations. The second blessing was the love that I've continued to have from our people. <coughs> Working the supermarket in Petrolia, Morenrechter, thank you for what Rechter for us doing, thank you Rechter. So you just wonder what is it? Hey, come and judge. Sabor, my man, come and sabor. It's that love, endless love that I've been shown throughout of this time. And they are entitled to live in a just and socially inclusive society, where their dignity and self-worth is intact and well cherished. They must access quality education. They must access universal and quality health care. They're entitled to clean water, to sanitation, to a place that they can call home, to a habitable environment that is well preserved, and in all of this, the space to be simply human. And then it explains why, I've said it in other occasions, in my 60th birthday, why people are so central. I'm afraid that is true, they, they remain central. And I've always felt that it's what made me wake up every morning to come here, to come and work, and to be as good a justice as I can using all that my faculties may permit me. And what a privilege it was to serve you all. And I'm thankful for that. I had no entitlement to that. I had a space to work, to think, to write, to my heart's content. I've had the pleasure of writing on virtually every big political, social, commercial disputes in our land. I've had the joy of going to law schools in this land and in other lands indeed, only to find extensive passages of what this court has written and what I have written, talk to young lawyers and law schools here and around the world. I've been blessed with remarkable colleagues who have made judicial collegiality appear natural and impressed. And they've been part of all of the writing. 
because we are a college. What you hear us pronounce has been worked on by all 11 of us. It's a collective project. As I end, I go back to where I started. I am my own liberator, and our people are their own liberators. And in the last instance, the people are the bedrock of our democracy. They call the shots, and they decide when to call those shots. And it is they who matter, as we institutions, parliament, the executive, the judiciary, that will public power, make sure that we are in the assets. Chief Justice, it was a wonderful experience to work with you. And I hope that I was there to provide you with joint and supportive leadership of our judiciary. I said last night that despite a past and comfortable encounter, we have found each other. We have made common cause on a principle and honest footing. We share the love for our people and their right to be well as much as it is our duty to serve them. And I say without any fear of contradiction, but your integrity has been shown to be beyond question. We all favor to defend and protect the gains of a hard won struggle for liberation Freedom and democracy is now unsurpassed. Each time there was a storm that swelled around our institution, you and me stood firm and together. You never flinched from making unpopular decisions, provided they were consistent with your honest and rigorous judgment, Chief Justice. But said, March evidence lies ahead. <laughs> but that is what good pilots learn to live with. I'm happy to tell our nation you are a safe pair of hands. And I wish you well as I make my last salute to you.
It's not something out there. It's something what our nation is about. We have to move from the awful spaces to better places. You will be part of the democratic project to make our country reflect the text and the living spirit of our constitution. Fidelity to oath of office is important, not because we are important, but because without it, not us, but our people will suffer. By our people, I want to bear again in these stupid times. I mean the full diversity of our people. Poor and rich, black and white, female and male, heaven and blue, immigrants, vulnerable people, the marginalized, the disabled, and indeed powerful ones all deserve our unwavering protection, which our Constitution demands us to provide. After all, you judges are the ultimate guardians of our Constitution for and on behalf of our people. May God bless Africa. May God bless her people.
out of the of understanding. We will miss you for a number of reasons. Some of them is because of your deep pocket that I often tease you. <laughs> In our private space, and never forgetting that you always have to be as sober as the judge. <laughs> it is DM, you know, uh, our entertainment allowance makes no provision for those things that could challenge your sobriety. <laughs> and it is DM who would just generously go out of his way to buy those drinks. What do you call them? You at the good temple square here said, waters of what? <laughs> of waters of immortality. <laughs> but rest assured, you all give my official residence uh, and been so bad. <laughs> we will miss you, dear. Thank you very much for the colleague you have been. And this marks the end of the session. Before the court adjourns, there are some refreshments out there. I hope there are enough for all of us. But there are refreshments. Let it not turn out to be wasteful expenditure. <laughs> the court adjourns. After a break, do stay with us.